edition of Hannity as we focus on the influence that unions have over countless aspects of our lives. And at the moment, one of Big Labor's biggest fans happens to reside inside the White House. Now, from the moment that he burst onto the national scene at the 2004 Democratic Convention, Barack Obama made the calculated political decision that he would side with unions, that is, as long as he got something in return. And it's that sad fact, this unholy alliance, that the driving force now behind what my next guest calls the president's anti-business bias. Now, he is the best-selling author of The Great Destroyer, just out this week. David Limbaugh, back with us. And by the way, full disclosure, Mr. Limbaugh has done some legal work for me over the years. Thank you for being with us. You. Um, you know, I read your book cover to cover, and I look at Barack Obama, and I remember what he said when he was running for office. He said, you know, if, if they try to take away your collective bargaining, I'm going to put on my walking shoes, and I'm going to get out there, and you're going to have the President of the United States walking with you. Yeah. The only thing the unions got uh, in this case, uh, the, you know, the Mayor Barrett, was a tweet the yeah. night before the election. Yeah. So what happened to the... <clears throat> Obama is rabidly anti-business, and he's rabidly pro-unions, flip side of the same coin. You know, we've got concrete evidence of that. Look what he did with the GM Chrysler takeover, where he subordinated the secured creditors' loans, wholly illegally, wholly capriciously, in favor of his union buddies, who, who were unsecured, and he gave them, you know, 50% when they were supposed to get 20%. He did the same thing. Uh, he's done the same thing in other areas. Uh, with uh, the waivers, the health care waivers, you know, he gave out some 1,231 Obamacare waivers. Mm -hmm. Half of those, or more than half, went to union people. And they only represent 12% you know, of employees. One of the big claims to fame, I mean, Joe Biden is out there saying, well, you know, uh, GM's alive and Bin Laden's dead. But when you look at the numbers, how many billions of dollars has the taxpayers lost as a result of this? And you, you talk about subordinating people that had invested in GM, That's right. they, their money was pushed off the side I mean, and something, lost. Something like $65 billion. In favor of the unions. Yeah, yeah, they lost. The taxpayers lost that kind of money. I don't remember. i got so many figures in my head in this massive, wonderful book I've just completed. <laughs> but but it, it's, you know, they, they kind of run together. But it's an enormous, unconscionable amount. I mean, Obama claims he is streamlining business regulations. In fact, he's uh, amassing them at a, regu uh, at a record pace. Uh, the, this NLRB, I mean, this uh, uh, labor memo came out uh, where uh, the union said, I mean, the union recommends that they want to give the, the uh, unions major influence. This is a secret memo. Boeing wasn't just a, a single example. They want to give them major influence and major business decisions. Okay, so this is why we're talking about the National Labor Relations yes. Board. It's a secret internal memo. And they want, they wanted influence and impact, and the unions would have impact about where companies could build plants. In bargaining. That's exactly right. right. But other major decisions, too. They're not supposed to have a major an influence on major business decisions like right, that. But then, then let me ask you this. As we look at Detroit, one of the great cities in this country, the last time I was there, my heart's broken. They, they are now bulldozing neighborhoods to consolidate services in Detroit. Right. And all of those car companies, they've moved to Tennessee. They're moving to Alabama. They're moving to Mississippi. Why? And why has that city now lost about half its population? Yeah, it, it, you're not letting the market work, and you're artificially injecting uh, uh, factors in that ought not be considered. And union, unions have the, this bargaining power, and they can hold uh, employers hostage. And this, this is an adversarial relationship, a legal, legally adversarial relationship. Obama has pointed this solicitor general, uh, a labor solicitor, Patricia Smith, who had a abominable record uh, in New York as a wage, starting a wage watch program against unions, and right. she's implemented a, a worse thing on the federal level. But let's go to the extreme, and I think Detroit became the extreme, where labor got too powerful. We can even go back as far as Eastern Airlines. I remember baggage handlers were getting paid sixty, yeah. eighty, a hundred thousand dollars a year, as according to some reports. But with, with this relationship between government, the Democratic Party, and the unions, unions give these politicians money, how do they get their money back? It's How do they get rewarded? It's an inherent conflict of interest. You've got in a normal private sector negotiation, you have the employer who has a, which has a profit motive, and it wants to re preserve its profit motive at the same time giving, paying high enough wage to, to take care of the, the uh, laborers. But in a government sector thing, the, the Democrats, when they're in charge, give them a seat to it that they get high wages in return for big labor, pack money, and thuggery at the ground level, as we're seeing and as we yeah. saw in Wisconsin.
All right, David Limbaugh, The Great Destroyer, great new book just out this week. Thanks for being here. Are you sure that was the name of The Great? The Great Destroyer. I stumble over it when I say it. Thank you. <laughs> and coming up, our own John Stossel.